Hello everyone, my name is Shane, and in this video, we're gonna be checking out the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3. This fitness tracker is available at the time of this video. I'll have some links in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. The retail price is $80, which is what I personally paid for this guy. Comes in three different colors. We have silver, pink gold, and this gray color we're gonna be checking out here today. Now, I am super excited to check this out because it's been three and a half years since Samsung has released one of these Galaxy Fit devices, so I'm excited to see what's new and improved here. While I was a fan overall of the previous Galaxy Fits, they had just mediocre battery life and the screen was pretty small. It was about one inch in screen size, but we now have a much larger screen here, a 1.6 inch AMOLED display. It's coming in with less features compared to their standard smartwatches, but it's just a much smaller profile. It's a much lighter device on the wrist. We have a couple new features such as fall detection and emergency SOS services. And this has an advertised 13 days of battery life, so we'll definitely be putting that to the test, but let's go ahead and check out the Galaxy Fit 3. Inside the box, we have our Fit 3 on top. Put that to the side for a second. See what else we get in the box. We have some paperwork and a warranty card, and we have a charging cable with Type-C on one side and a two-pin proprietary connector on the other side. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the Galaxy Fit 3. First impressions, I can definitely tell this has a metal finish to it, so it's a nice touch over the plastic on the previous fits. The band on this feels like a silicone finish, and it looks very similar to Samsung smartwatches compared to the previous fits that had a much thinner band to go alongside those slimmer devices. But now let's go ahead and try this on for the first time. First impressions on the wrist, this has a very comfortable feel to it. There's really not much at all to this device, which which is what I've always loved about the fits, just the lighter weight overall. So quickly comparing the weights here, the Galaxy Fit 3 is just 36 grams. Now, if I compare that to my Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, it's coming in at 86 grams. So it is a significant difference and feel on the wrist. Taking a quick physical tour here, you can see that we have one button on the side, have a hole here. I'm not sure if this is a mic or a speaker. I didn't think either of those were on this. On the bottom, we have our sensor here. Doesn't seem to stick out too much from the bottom of the device. And if my memory serves me right, this is a much smaller charger overall compared to the previous fits. That was more of a cradle sort of design of charger. This just clips right onto the back here. So really small and Portable. We also have some buttons on the top and bottom here to remove the bands. So we can just go ahead and press that down and this clips right off. And then it also seems pretty easy to go ahead and just clip that back in, clicks back into place. And now taking our first look at the 1.6 inch display, I can immediately tell it's way easier to read stuff on this Fit 3. Again, compared to the previous fits, you could just get an idea of this text on this screen. It just really was harder to read and do things in general on this guy. So this definitely has more of a smartwatch look and design to it, given the more robust band and that larger screen, but it still maintains the feeling of those lighter fits. So I'm super excited to run this through its paces. Now, when you get out your phone, you're gonna get a little notification, Galaxy Fit 3, new device has been found. So we're gonna go ahead and connect. And if you don't have a Samsung phone, just download the Galaxy wearable app to get more features out of this device. After you have that downloaded and you have your Fit paired to your phone, you're gonna choose which wrist you want it on. Personally, I'm gonna put it on my right wrist because I'm a lefty myself. And you can also choose the button position, which I think I'm actually gonna switch the button around to the other side. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna flip this guy over, clip it back in. You can put them on either side. And once you go through a few more prompts, we're gonna be fully set up. We'll check out the Galaxy wearable app features in a minute, but let's go ahead and check out the Fit 3 itself. Again, we have that 1.6 inch display. By default, we have our date, time, number of steps, heart rate, and our battery life. Swiping down from the top, we have our control panel. We have two different pages of options here. We have what looks to be a sleep mode, have our power button, do not disturb. We do have an always on display option, so we'll just keep that on for now. Taking a look at that always on display, we just have the time showing here, and it's the same design as the current wallpaper, so that's really nice. Taking a look at our settings, there's quite a few different options on here that you can change on the Fit itself or the app, which does have a pretty strong haptic feedback to it, so I'm sure you're not gonna be missing any notifications on this. We also have a fair amount of display settings here. We can change our brightness straight from this, or again, the quick panel. Let's take a look at our maximum brightness. 
This seems to get pretty bright. We'll check it out later in direct sunlight. And something that was missing on those previous fits was they weren't able to show media controls. So we have a setting here to go ahead and show those. So as soon as you start playing a song or a video or any sort of media, you're gonna get this screen here. So you're able to just go ahead and tap to play and pause. You can skip and reverse tracks. You can adjust the volume. There's an option to change how often the heart rate is measured and it'll give you notifications at various heart rates if you want it to. We also have some advanced options such as being able to double press the home button to go to any certain thing we want to. So example, if I wanna have a calculator, go ahead and set that to it. And then I can go ahead and double press and have a really nice little calculator here. This is awesome. Every time you tap, you do get a little bit of haptic feedback. So this is a really nice little experience. I'm pleasantly surprised by this initially. We also have a flashlight option, and this will give us a perfect gauge of how much bezel there actually is on this device. Maybe for 2024 standards, it's a little bit of bezel, but for these fit devices themselves, this is a great screen to body ratio here. We also have a find my phone option. So that gets plenty loud. We have our theater and airplane mode options. We also have a water lock option. So when you have this on and you're in the water, you're not gonna have any accidental touches on this or anything with the water hitting it. And it is worth mentioning that this does have IP68 water and dust resistance rating, and you can go as low as 50 meters or 164 feet underwater, and this thing will be fine. So you can definitely wear this in the water. And if you swipe to the right, we have a ton of different tiles. So we have some of our basic fitness tracking. We can start a workout here, take a look at our sleep tracking, check in the weather, check our calendar, we have our heart rate, and we can measure this straight from here if we want to. And there are even more tiles we can add, so definitely gonna be checking out all this stuff over the next day or so. I'm gonna use this for a full day, and I'll come back with my final first impressions on the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3. All right, so it's been about a day and a half since I first started using this Fit 3, and I'm definitely ready to share some of my first impressions with you guys. So starting with the fit and the feel on the wrist, this is significantly lighter on the wrist to the point where you don't even notice sometimes that it's even on. And mind you, this is coming from somebody who has been using the Galaxy Watch Classic 6 and the Apple Watch Ultra for a very long time now. So while these have a lot of features and functionalities, just takes up a lot of space on your wrist and I find that when I'm doing my workouts during the day and things, I'm always kind of hitting up on these watches and accidentally pressing buttons. It can be cumbersome in my day-to-day -day use, but this does a great job of just staying out of the way for a more active lifestyle. Now, as far as the actual usage of the device itself, I've been really happy with interacting with this device throughout the day. There's a lot of space here to look at a lot of information. There's a lot of detail and all the different apps that you can use on this. Now, there's about 12 apps or so on this device. You can rearrange them on your phone. I have them set up to have all my basic timers here at the top. So just like you would on any other smartwatch, you can go ahead and set a timer if you need to. It's gonna be available on your home screen to access at any time. There's also a camera remote here, which is nice. So you just go ahead and tap that and opens your camera right up and then just go ahead and tap and you can go ahead and take a picture. And then what I found is that a lot of the things in the apps are also available in the way of the tiles. So these kind of overlap each other a little bit. I was surprised with how robust some of these apps were for how basic of a device this is. This actually does take care of a lot of your smartwatch needs, at least for me personally, on a daily basis. Of course, it can't do everything that a smartwatch can, but it can help with a lot of useful things such as getting text messages, for example. So you are able to reply to text messages, which you are able to set up 30 different pre-made messages. And these messages have a 30 character limit. So for example, this is exactly 30 characters as far as seeing how much you could send back at once. And if you do want to send back a message, you just have to tap it and then it's gonna automatically reply and take away the notification. Now this does work with emails as well. So if you get an email, you can reply again with those 30 different message options. I know that's not as ideal for emails, but if you did have that use case, you could send a message that way. And again, it just automatically dismisses that and just goes ahead and sends the message for you. Now, if you get a phone call for whatever reason, you can't answer the call from the device, you can only end the call, or you can go ahead and send a text message back to the person so that you can let them know you call them 
them back. I tracked my sleep last night with this on without any problems. And then I can tap, see what hours I actually slept, how long I slept for, what my sleep score was, different sleep stages and things like that. So there is a lot that you can do straight from the device itself, but I've also really enjoyed the relationship of the band and my phones. It's really easy to come in here and change a watch face, for example. So I switched to this one earlier today when I was working out since I wanted to see the exact seconds. I am probably about to lose all my metrics for the day since it is changing over to midnight here, but it is really easy to just quickly come in here and switch to these different watch faces. And there's a ton of different options to choose from. You can also add your own watch face. And in about 30 seconds time, you can go ahead and add whatever picture you want to this watch face. So super cool. But now taking a quick look at the battery life, because we are down to 1% here. We started out at 70% when we first turned the device on, on Friday at 4 p.m. So it is now Sunday at midnight. It's been about a day and a half since I've been heavily using this. Mind you, I've had the always on display on for the entire time. I've been tracking workouts. It's tracking my heart rate every 10 minutes or so. I've been getting a lot of notifications. I've been playing around with the features a lot to prepare and get ready for this video. If you are using this device to its full capacity, getting a two day battery life, I'm still pretty satisfied with that. I think I could definitely push it to three or four days if I turned off the always on display, for example. So we'll do a quick little charging test here. Go ahead and attach the connector. That stays on pretty firmly. Go ahead and see how long this takes to charge up. And wow, this charges up really fast. We're at 53% after just 23 minutes time. For a point of reference, the first Galaxy Fit I had used took two hours and 46 minutes to charge to 100%. So this is way faster charging speed. So I'm really glad that you can quickly top this up for the day and not much time. Now, as far as the fitness tracking itself, it does seem to do a pretty good job of tracking all of your activities throughout the day. So for me today, I did a 60 minute workout. I also did a 20 minute walk and was also just moving around the house a lot. So it added up about 120 minutes of activity for me. It didn't automatically pick up on the fact that I was doing push-ups and sit-ups as part of my workout, but it did automatically detect that I was taking a walk so you don't even have to do anything to turn this on. It just does it itself as you walk for a few minutes. And then once you're done, it automatically cools down and counts down for you and ends the workout automatically. And then later on, you can go back and reference your metrics of your speed and different things like that. Obviously, this would be more beneficial for running, but just for a point of reference, you can check out all these metrics on the band itself, or you can open up your phone again and check out all your information. There is no GPS on the device, so you will have to have your phone alongside you if you wanna track the actual routes of your workouts and walks and hikes and things like that. But overall, first impressions of the Galaxy Fit 3, I'm really impressed with this little device initially and for the price, the $80 price tag, it has a lot of functionalities. Of course, there are some sacrifices here. The biggest ones that I noticed in my first day or so of usage is that there is no Wi-Fi. So if you wanna get notifications on this guy, you will have to have your phone nearby. We can't answer phone calls or take phone calls from this, which is kind of inconvenient. And there are no NFC or payment options here. So as far as some of your more advanced features you would have on a smartwatch, it is missing some of the bells and whistles. Since this is so comfortable to wear and I can honestly do 90% of what I do on my smartwatch on this Fit 3, I'm going to try and use this for the foreseeable future, see if I can get by with some of the compromises. But what are your thoughts on the Galaxy Fit 3? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the Shane Simons YouTube channel today since I'm definitely going to be making a full review on this, go through all the features and all the functionalities, test that battery life some more. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.